two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Great Marathon 3000 with a very special guest with Mr. Neil Pinder. And uh, Neil is a teacher, high school teacher, which is secondary school teacher. We are in England. And as well, he has many projects. He is a director of a nice project of GLAM. We will talk about that. Hello, Neil. How are you? I'm fantastic. You? Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for your time and thank you for all your ideas and your energy is so beautiful. We will start with uh, teenagers. I see you have like your students are between 11 and 17 more or less. Yeah. And you teach project and architecture, which is quite amazing in a high school mm -hmm. or secondary school. Would you like to start to tell us about your job as a teacher, what you see in the teenager, your ideas about education? Um, basically, I teach young people that they have the power and they have the power to how they can build, change their environment. And they're non-traditional people and traditional people. Non-traditional means that their parents or their relatives may not have been in the creative field. They may have come as settlers into England or they may have uh, been here for a long time, but they haven't got the sort of trait that goes through that makes them or turns them into um, architects, engineers, designers. So I call them non-traditional. And then the traditional ones may come from parents who are architects, engineers, etc. But their parents don't think that they should go into these professions because they would rather treasure them going to be an accountant, be an investment banker, etc, etc. So what I do is I nurture them and say to them, you have the creative skills, you have the skills that can change your whole neighborhood, how you live and how you interface with people. And this is the part where they get. And so from the age of 11, I'm telling them that they can do, they can succeed. And then when they do their GCSEs, which is their A level, their O levels, and then they do their A levels and they go on to university as architects, then they come, they have this social responsibility that I tell them that they come back and help another generation from seven up from 11 upwards. So they've all got, they're always churning over, coming back and helping uh, younger people to realize that they can do it. Because when you are quite young, you don't know what you want to do. You're, you, you're impressionable and you've got your parents right. saying, your parents say, do this, do this, do this. And your, and your other people say, do this. You want to earn money. And they put money as the main goal in life. But where, when you're creative, I say, if you have passion, no matter what you do, you will succeed if you have passion. If you have creative passion, you will always succeed. So that's what I give them the gift of or the belief that they can do it. And then from there on, they leave school go to university, they become architects, and, they, and I call them homegrown because they come from me. So they're, they, they are homegrown. And then my company is called Homegrown Plus. And the pluses are, they tell their friends in universities, they tell their friends in college, they tell their friends that they know, oh, there's this, uh, there's this mad teacher usually who is, passionate about architecture and creativity and he could help you and connect you to somebody who will connect you to somebody and this is how we, we i operate and i remind everybody to have your notebook because all the ideas and all the project and all the beautiful activities neil do please take notes to do the same wherever you are especially if you are in the education field Neil, I saw the organization GLAM, G-L-A-M, and you are the director of several projects. Would you like to tell us what you do and what is GLAM? Right. Um, basically, I, I, I'm always metamorphosizing. So we, as creatives, we're always metamorphosizing in our minds. And then we, we tell everybody, I've got this, we want to do this. Because if we stay still, the, the establishment, try, they try to clone what we do and reproduce it and say that it's them who invented it. So all the time we have to metamorphosize. So with my initiative, uh, I set up 
another initiative called Celebrating Architecture. I will send you the links to some of my films. Please, uh, and uh, we will give to people. Lovely, Celebrating Architecture, which is to infuse young people into getting into architecture. So we, we, we set them projects. And the projects that they do is to build pavilions, is to build places that they can go to, relax, feel comfortable with their friends. So that's a pavilion project that we call and that we do where young people can design it from the beginning. We tool them up with the language of architectural language. We tool them up with language like client, end user. And my latest one that I'm tooling up all my students with is parametric architecture. So parametric architecture, as some of you will know who are architects is about, um, it was invented by a mathematician. And I say to my students, and I say in front of the class, I am absolutely useless at math. But it was invented by a mathematician in about 20, 2008. Then it was named uh, parametric architecture in 2012. And basically it uses mathematical algorithms and geometric and organic shapes to, to pull out designs. So a chief exponent of this is Zaha Hadid. She's done, uh, Frank Gehry's done some uh, um, uh, parametric architecture. So I'm tooling up my students with the words that they need to know and how to orientate themselves around. And so that is one initiative. The other one, Glam. Glam was born out of one of, seeing a student who came to me from another teacher a textile student and she wanted to do a project but she really really wanted to have a nice project so we sat her down got her project really nice she took it to a, a college because she thought she might go to college and say instead of staying at the school and uh, a lecturer crushed her said you will never get into uh, a university because you're not good enough basically that, that's what they oh, said to her so yeah so I said to her all right you come and we will help you to get into the university you want. So the students know I love Gucci. They know I love Louis Vuitton. And so I thought up of how can I get students infused into design? Gucci, Louis, Glam stands for Gucci, Louis Vuitton, architecture and me. And Harriet Harris, who's a professor at the Pax University in New York, she said to me, Neil, you have come up with a Trojan horse. So everybody's about the glitz, the glamour, the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton. And then they come to the workshop and it's about wearable architecture, how you can design architecture to wear. Uh, I mean, don't forget for generations, the Egyptians, the Yinkas, the uh, African tribes, uh, the, the Asian tribes, all of them have been wearing wearable architecture in terms of fashion, head garments, the Maasai warriors and the warriors who used to wear masses are, are things around their neck. That's all wearable architecture. But we empower the students to realize that they can look at different designs. They can look at different cultures and also at the same time, make a piece of wearable architecture. So on the 28th and 29th of November, this Saturday and Sunday coming, we are doing a work, a worldwide shop workshop. So it's called Glam Goes Global. So we're connecting to you know me in, in in Bolivia. We're connecting to New York. We're connecting to the Caribbean. We're connecting to Africa. We're connecting to France. So we're connecting all over, all over the, but all over the world, all over the globe, with like-minded, creative people who all they want to do is to make and have the passion for making. And then that leads on to every single avenue that they'll ever want to do. That's amazing, actually. And what's more amazing for me, as this, you are the first teacher in my whole life, I meet, I'm, I'm meeting with such a passion for architecture. I think it's a beautiful blend. What, what are your ideas with architecture and school and the future university. How would you do a beautiful school and university with a new concept of architecture and with your ideas of 
being all together, traditional, not traditional, everybody. So my idea is first, you will be central to it as well. So it's to link in people from around the world. And uh, after the pandemic, because don't forget, this is a, I mean, it's a sad time, but it's also a brilliant time because it put a stop button on the whole everything. And right. so people like us, non-traditional people, have said, right, we can reset, we can readjust, we can press the reset button and have things more the way that we want instead of the establishment telling us that you have to have this, you have to have this, you have to have that. So my idea is to get people from around the world and every, say, six months after the pandemic, maybe just in a centralised place, even if we do it by Zoom, in a centralised place, we meet, we gather, and we're creative, and we send out all the creative sort of vibe to all of the rest of the establishment that will be created off of our creativity. So we would have a series of creative schools. All, of, all we're doing is creativity, and through creativity, don't, don't forget, creativity involves math, it involves science, it involves literature, it involves being able to read, so if there's no subject that's excluded from creativity, but as under the banner of creativity, we can do anything. We can teach kids anything that we want to teach them. And at the same time, they would, and young people and people like us will be in charge. So instead of a, a government saying, trying to indoctrinate us into their ideology, their philosophy and having control, because at the end of the day, what they want is power, control, and earn the money. All we want is, all we want is to be able to be create, creative. We want the power of creative, creativity. Once you're creative, you have a free mind. You think for yourself. You can do anything in the world once you begin to think to yourself without the chains of the government saying English, math, science, or whatever, or what, you know, the, this pre-prescribed pre pre set of yes, eight man. subjects. We will be free, but all, as, as I said, all of our subjects incorporate, all of creativity incorporates everything. Time is flying and we are almost at the end, but we would like to know, what do you think young people need most today? They need to basically be told, you can do it. You can do it. So, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. Believe in yourself. You have, the, you have the power, you have the ability, and you can do it. That's all you need. And so once please, you tell every you, young people that's watching this video, you can do it. That's definitely. Beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Any message for, oh, maybe I shouldn't do, do that, but for the ministries of education <laughs> the, ministries of of, the ministries of education of the world you yes. have to listen to people like us forget all of your high powered people who have been to the same school the same tutors and who are churning out the same ways you haven't done it right you've proven you have failed in so many ways. You've failed your people. You failed, keep on failing your people. Let us have a try. Let us do it. Because we will disseminate the, the power. We will disseminate the ability for people to believe in themselves. And with us, it will be more even as opposed to you being on top and then being in love. So... Give us, please, a few words on the education of the future, and then we will close. I think because of the pandemic and because of Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter has empowered everyone who didn't have a voice to speak up. LGBT, uh, the underrepresented people of our society, it's given them a voice, and it's also given them a belief that they can. As I said, they have the power. And at the same time, uh, I think, well, I know that we can change everything. We can, you can, we can. We will join up, all of us, and change. I tell you, That's that is the right time. 
thank you so much for your time, dear Neil. Thank you for this vision. It's not on your vision, it's really true. We really need it. And that's yeah, exactly what the children and the young people wants to listen and wants to be with you. That's why they want to be with you all the time, actually. <laughs> thank you for your time. Just believe in your heart and you will do it. Believe in your heart. Yeah. Thank you for your time. We definitely keep in touch and we can do many exchange and programs and that's yeah. why we're here too, to help yeah. each other. We, as, I said to people, as I said to people, what I'd like to do is send students over to you, you send students over to me, me send students over to stuff, so that they can see the world and experience that we're creatively all the same. Yeah, that's the way. And when they know the word, automatically we will have peace culture because we will know and respect each other. Exactly. Thank you so much. Please take care. And um, we see you pretty soon. We will do much more activities. Thank you very much. Exchange and everything. Let me see here. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. See you bye soon. Bye.